So now let's try the problem. Now I'm going to start with a fresh piece of paper so we have enough room. Z stand for? The atomic number. Yeah, and what does the atomic number tell you about an atom? Number of protons. Okay, good. Let's see if you can find that in your periodic table. Two. Two, that's right. Helium only has one more proton than hydrogen. Could, but um, my personal feeling is that this is much simpler. Uh, this, this, yeah, it's the same formula, but I think this is a much easier formula to work with here. This is the formula I think you would usually use on a test anyway. So let, let's eschew the formula they gave you in the homework. I must just use uh, this formula over wait, here. So what is what is en? En. Oh wait, that's. What do they say? En. Uh, en equals negative thirteen. Oh. This is the energy of the uh, of the nth energy level. So, e sub one you would plug in one for n, or e sub two you would plug in two for n, or e sub three you would plug in three for n. So the n here is just to show that there's a different energy for each uh, energy level. By the way, n is called the quantum number because the energy is quantized here. Good. Let's draw a picture. It's always a good idea to draw a picture for this type of problem. So what would our picture look like here? Yeah, it's a good start. Good. That's right, so we should put in an arrow. The electron is going from n equals 2 to n equals 1. So the electron is moving like this. All right, anything else that we can build into our picture? Um, yeah, we should definitely build our energy levels in that we just figured out. So it's always a good idea to draw a picture and then put as much of the information as possible into your picture. So we got here negative 54.4. What are the units on this? Electron volts. And here this energy for the second one was negative 13.6. Mm -hmm. All right, and the important thing here is that you saw z isn't 1 anymore, z is 2. So you had to plug in 2 for z in the formula. And then you plug in one case where n was 1 and one case where n was 2. Okay, that's good. Then you convert it into joules. Okay. Uh, let's see, where'd you get the 40.9 from? 
that lose that? Do that subtraction again? All right, that's a little bit better. So, so 40.8 electron volts. That times Our conversion that an electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules to get the missing joules. That equals HF. That's good. That divided by energy, you could use this formula. Good. And if you look at that number for H that you used, you can see that the units for H are in terms of joules. So that's why we have to convert from electron volts to joules over here. And then we're done. Yeah. Okay. By the way, did we emit a photon or absorb one? Emit. Now, they, I think they told us that, but how do we know we're emitting one? It's positive. What was positive? Uh, I don't know. Let's just think about the common sense of the problem here. Um, is this electron gaining energy or losing energy? Looks like maybe you're not quite sure. So is it gaining or losing potential energy? You can think of this a lot like gravitational energy. So it's going from here to here. So is it going to a higher potential energy or a lower potential lower. energy? Lower. This is a, uh, a bigger negative number, which means a smaller number. So um, this is going down. So is it gaining or losing energy? Gaining. Stop and think about that. Gaining, losing. Yeah. Is that clear why it's losing energy? Because it's moving down. Um, it's going uh, from a higher energy to a lower energy. Um, just like if you were going, at, at, if the chalkboard was moving down, so this, there's an analogy here with gravitational potential energy. The high levels here are like high gravitational energy, and the low levels are like low energy. It's just a little confusing because we have negative numbers. Remember, this electron is getting happier. Well, things, uh, so remember, things want to lose energy. This seems counterintuitive, but everyone wants to lose potential energy. Just like this chalkboard wants to lose its gravitational potential energy and move down to the ground. Uh, so if this is losing energy, it's going to do that by absorbing a photon or emitting one. Yeah, it's losing energy, and the energy can't just disappear, so again, it has to get packed into that photon that then leaves with the energy. So this is the uh, frequency of that photon that's going to take the energy away that the electron doesn't need anymore when it goes from this level to this level. Okay, so this is the apparatus for this type of question. Uh, here's the basic formula. Uh, remember, this only works if there's only a single electron, but it works for any number of protons. You just have to look up what the number of protons is. That's the atomic number, and plug that in uh, for Z. Um, if, uh, if you're using the standard unit for H, you've got to put this into H before you go on. Uh, so it really helps to make this type of picture. So you can compare the different energy levels and then find the energy change. Okay? Uh, that's a question you're sure to see something like that on the test. So that's very important to have in your notes. That's a very popular type of question. 